Hey what's up YouTube, here's a quick video to demonstrate how you may create a tiling texture from any non-tiling texture in Engine. This technique is not meant to be used in game, right? This is meant to be used in case you generate unbaked textures in Engine using non-tiling noise functions for instance, or to convert any non-tiling texture to a tiling one offline in Engine. Now there are softwares to do this already, like Game has the ability to make this, right? but you might be interested to know how to do this in Engine, so let's jump right into it. We start with a simple texture coordinates node, multiplied by some scalar parameters to control the tiling. Then we'll use a fraction node to make tiles of repeating values between 0 and 1. Then I'm going to split the red and green channels and use a sphere mask of a given radius to create a one-axis gradient. I'm going to duplicate that and do the same thing but for the other side of each tile, so sphere mask with a one value here. And I'm going to combine both left and right masks and top and bottom masks and use named reroutes to keep the graph clean. Nice. Then I'm going to sample that texture a second time and shift its coordinates by half a unit in the x-axis and then lerp the result using our mask for the x-axis. The center of that texture on that axis has now been copied over that seam and hides it, and we can control how much we cover that seam with this width parameter. Great. Now we may do the same for the other axis, right? So sample the texture a third time, shift its coordinates by half a unit in the y axis, and lerp the result using our mask for the y axis. Cool, now how do we merge those two results? Well, that's where it's a little bit tricky. We cannot fix the seam on the x-axis and y-axis separately and magically merge the result. It's hard to illustrate why, but what we actually need to do is sample the texture a fourth time and shift its coordinate by half a unit in both x and y-axis. Then layer those two textures with our mask for the x-axis as well as those two. And only then layer the two results with our mask for the y-axis. You may skip this, but here I'm going to add one final lerp to blend with the original texture, so I may show you before and after. Voila, nice, and we can control how much seam coverage we add, right? We may also push this a little bit further in case you feel like the way we cover those seams is a little bit too obvious by adding some noise and distortion to those mask gradients, so feel free to try that. Now one more thing, that's the setup for our texture, right? In case you have any position based noise though, same principle but it's worth noting that there's a few differences. One, we only need a mask for the left and top edges. Then here I'm using fraction to make the noise coordinates loop. That wasn't necessary when we were projecting the texture, but here it is. Then control the scale of the noise. Here I'm adding time as a third dimension to make the noise scroll upward and animate it, nothing fancy. Then sample the noise a first time, then a second time by shifting the noise position by an entire tile on the x-axis, then on the y-axis, then on the x and y-axis and lerp them like we did for the texture, and ta-da, tiling noise! Now most of these noise functions do come with tiling options, but in case you make your own or I don't know, generate some kind of position based patterns like Gersner waves, this may be helpful to make the pattern tile and bake that into a tiling flipbook or something. But more on Gersner waves in the next video. I've got a cool project almost ready to be released on my Patreon, so stay tuned for that. Alright, that's it for today. It's definitely not something you'd need every day but I thought it was interesting enough to share. Thanks for watching, consider joining my Patreon if you want to support me and get access to all kinds of cool projects. I'll see you in the next video, take care of yourself, bye bye!